Las Vegas is utterly amazing amid a global pandemic. It remains to be cautiously open even if Governor Sisolak has not given a green light for entertainment and live events to come back. Most of the restaurants are open for dine-in, still at 50% of capacity, and the resorts and casinos are still operating with strict guidelines on masks, social distancing, and yes, even smoking on table games may be restricted as well, unless you smoke with your mask on. <laughs> Seriously guys, on behalf of Las Vegas, I commend the visitors and residents who follow strictly these mandates and guidelines for our own sake and for everyone's sake as well. Once again, a million thanks to our COVID-19 heroes, the first responders, medical workers, government and non-government organizations, religious leaders, and law enforcement agencies. Educators, take out and drive through restaurants, groceries, and all essential business and yes, you and me too. I'm truly blessed to live, work, and play in Las Vegas. Indeed, my heart belongs to this entertainment capital of the world, with many of the best and biggest resorts in the globe. Las Vegas is a global brand, but not too many people really know how great the city is. And this is what this program is here for. Welcome back to Vegas Vibes, giving you a peek at what's curved and ruined in this music, pageantry, and live production, and fascinating scenes in the city that never sleeps and i'm your host esmeralda patilia gold some exciting news when we come back so please stay with me Asian Network. Call now for huge standalone and bundle savings at staying with me. I have received calls from visitor friends asking me about what else they can do in Vegas right now aside from gambling, eating, and partying at the pool. So I decided to let you in on some exciting things you can do while you're in Las Vegas. First on the list is Vegas Indoor Skydiving. If you've always wanted to experience the thrill of skydiving but the thought of jumping out of the plane scares you, there's still hope with Vegas Indoor Skydiving. The view may be different but at least you won't have to worry about being squashed like a mosquito on the windshield. There's a brief training class where you'll be fitted into your flight gear. You need to wear comfortable clothing, a short sleeve shirt, and tennis shoes as it gets hot in there. Instead of plunging down, you'll soar up inside a padded room with a fan that generates vertical winds of up to 120 miles per hour. Once the propeller kicks into full gear, you will fly Float high above the netted floor. Each person has two minutes of tunnel time and the entire experience takes about an hour. Don't worry if you've never done anything like this before. It's fun for all ages and there's no experience required because you'll have a flight instructor. After your experience, your hair will surely be a mess. But who cares? You'll have a time of your life. Visit Vegas.com and check out Vegas Indoor Skydiving. Or you can go around Las Vegas and satisfy your need for speed with the cool slingshot that looks like a futuristic sports car and motorbike or trike rolled into one. You can rent one for a few hours or the whole day and it's pretty cool and safe. 
Or if that's not enough to keep your adrenaline high, you can push exotic cars to the limits as you drive on a real racetrack or ride shotgun in a drift-ready 707HP Dodge Hellcat SRT. You can do it safely for two hours with the professional racing instructor included. That's at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Of course, you need to be over 18 years of age and have a valid driver's license to enjoy this toys. Or a less scary one will quench your need for speed by racing a Saudi Card SR5 on a dedicated racetrack with hairpin turns. Fast acceleration straightaways and full adrenaline is also at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Or you can go ahead and zoom to the top in the heart of Las Vegas Strip and step into the high roller. It is the world's largest observation wheel with 28 transparent pods holding 40 passengers each. Believe it or not, it's not only fun and exciting, it's also the best view of Las Vegas. And finally, experience one of the natural wonders of the world at Grand Canyon West. Take a stroll on the Glass Sky Bridge, indulge in the fantastic cuisine, and take a shuttle to breathtaking viewpoints. You can check out Vegas.com for more info or book these activities. See, there's really more to Vegas than what everyone knows. Guys and girls, I urge you to please adhere to all the safety guidelines, mandates, and rules because the next life you may be able to save is yours or your family's. We need you in Las Vegas, but we need you to be safe and we need you to keep others safe as well as you enjoy our paradise and our hospitality. When Vegas Twice returns, I'll be interviewing someone very special. I'll be right back before you know it, so please stay there. Asian Network. Call now for huge standalone and bundle savings at Here with us today, we have an accomplished singer, songwriter, and artistic producer with more than 30 years of experience in the music industry, mm -hmm. also known as the Golden Voice. Well. Welcome, Mr. George <laughs> Luis Rojas, mm -hmm. also known as Rojitas. Yeah, that's me. Since uh, 1984, I started as a single songwriter back in Cuba. After returning a uh, four year living in England, so I started singing pop rock country music. And it was complicated that time in Cuba to do that kind of music. So I ended up singing salsa and Latin American fusion things. And since 1985, I started making television or recording, you know, albums and stuff like that. So it's a long career from pop rock country music to salsa music and then tropical fusion music. And then I ended up uh, in television as a host. I did three programs by myself and I had a radio program too and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Long I must career. say, you have a pretty quite impressive resume. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. Many and years. Yes, just to name a few facets of your talent mm -hmm. in the music industry. So tell us about your childhood. When did you discover your passion for music? Uh, I, think it was, I think it was living in England. Uh, last year, my stay in England, I realized I was a singer. Uh, this is what I do. And this is what I would like to do the rest of my life. And I went back to Cuba, and all of a sudden I re started writing songs. And of course, the songs were like a, a more like childhood kind of song. But little by little, started getting better, and then I started singing in clubs with groups. Oasis was the name of my group in those days, and I started singing, and at the same time writing songs. Was, the two things came combined, 
And um, yeah. was that something you inherited from your parents? My my mother, she was she used to sing beautifully. Uh, in the fifties, uh, she uh, she got. I think I remember she uh, she went to the Cuban television in the fifties, but she didn't. She decided not to keep on uh, oh, her career. But yeah, it comes from my mother's side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. So, uh, um, I understand you played a wide variety of music in your lifetime, and mm -hmm. you've been with the band oh, for yeah. so many years, yeah, touring I the world. Oh yeah. Um, after I decided to join the salsa world, uh, uh, I've recorded more than 20 albums and tours more than 20 countries. So yeah, uh, especially Europe in the 90s, there was a lot of contracts going on in Europe for uh, Cuban music and uh, Puerto Rican and Venezuelan Colombian music. And yeah, we went all over Europe, and then the United States, and then South America, especially Mexico. There was a lot of contrast going to Mexico, and yeah, we play, we uh, represent Cuba, especially in Europe, uh, many, many, many times. Many. You have mentioned that you did your own TV show? Oh yeah, uh, one day I was recording uh, a salsa show back in Havana, and uh, uh, all of a sudden, uh, a very well-known director from Cuba came and said, I need your help. I need your help, I need your help right now, because I have a studio full of people and the, the host is not here. I need your help. I'm not, I have no experience whatsoever in this They put thing, you on the spot. But it's, <laughs> she, she gave me like cards and sit down and please help me. And I, they liked it and I did the first six months and then they created a program for me and then I did a whole year. And then, yeah, it was it was a uh, it was an incredible experience, you know, to be in front of a camera and suddenly you're speaking to millions of people. And uh, but it was okay. Uh, it was not my thing, but uh, fortunately the critics were okay with me, so it was good. I'm sure you did well. It was good. It was good. Is that something you want to pursue? Maybe in the future. Yeah, why not? You know, I think the job Maybe you're acting? doing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know. But the this uh, incredible job, for example, that you're doing. Sitting in front of a camera and uh, talking to the people, you know, it's a very special bond you have, you have with the people in the house. People, oh my God, let me listen. So if you do your job good, people will follow you. People will love you so much. So uh, I should uh, get tips from you. <laughs> <laughs> so How you did as it. You, the only thing you have to be is be completely natural and talk to people the way you are, you know, and uh, there's no problem. If you talk like them, like if you were in the house, like normally, uh, I remember one of the teachers that I had in those days. Uh, I was all the time looking at different cameras, and uh, the person said, "Your camera is this one," but you know I was very nervous looking at any camera. And then the teacher came to me and said, "You know what? It's okay. Look at any camera. Feel good. Mm -hmm. Of course, you have to look, especially the one camera." But uh, it was good. It was three or four years of my life, and I remember that with great pleasure, honestly. You know, being a host in television. Yes, it was a great experience. It for was you. good. It was good. Um, let's talk about um, the things that you have accomplished. You're oh. also a member of uh, the Latin Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, and you're also the founder of artistic. You are the founder of Roga Production Music mm -hmm. and Arts since yeah. 2016. Yeah. Well, Tell the, us more the about Latin it. Grammys. You know the uh, the Academy, the Latin Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences, uh, based on in the, here in the United States. I'm a member of that since. Uh, by 2006, then I stopped, and then I came back, and uh, I'm a member of the jury of the Latin Grammy. So the whole of uh, thing, you know, we have to vote, and uh, I'm very happy now because uh, everything is coming to a good level now. Good music, good songs, better lyrics. You know, the arrangements are better, and uh, the songs that Latin Americans are giving to the people are better now. That two or three years ago I was a little worried because you know things were going uh, like a little too easy and uh, but now it's getting better. But now it has and, a, a new, it has a for the better. Yeah and Roga Production Music and Arts is the agency that I have with my wife Elizabeth since almost two years. We are representing and producing new artists mm -hmm. uh, from creating the song until. And you are a songwriter. Yeah, old, and Elizabeth is also a songwriter. So oh, we wonderful. write the song, we look for the arrangements, and we look for the studios, and you know, the whole shaban. We do from the beginning until the uh, the master. 
So and then goes to the internet and you know iTunes and everything. Is that why you're here? You're having a project here in Las uh, Vegas. We are having several projects like concerts and uh, uh, productions, like artistic productions and all kinds of artistic ways. Like um, it's an extension of Roga production in Vegas. So yeah, many. But you good are based in uh, in Toronto. Toronto, in Canada, Canada. Yeah, but many good things are coming. Uh, You're bringing it and here in in uh, several days now. I'll be performing around Vegas, several places. And Sunday, I'm going to be performing in Capri. It's a new place. It's a Latin place, but it's beautiful. And uh, I don't know the address uh, now, but I, I just arrived. But it's beautiful. And I uh, will be involved in all kinds of shows, from salsa bands to more like feeling and jazzy bolero thing. So yeah, that several stuff so I will be doing in a few days. Yeah, that sounds very exciting. Thank you so much. What was the most defining moment of your career? Ooh. Any exceptional performances in your past that stands out? Yes, for some reason? Uh, many. But I think one of the greatest was in 2000. Uh, the producer of the Beatles, he went to Cuba for a concert, and. Uh, with the National Symphonic Orchestra of Cuba. And they were rehearsing. But that time, I was co-producing an album dedicated to the Beatles, but with a Cuban sound, mm. not salsa sound, no more Cuban traditional music sound. So it was completely new. And we find out the hotel he was staying. We went there, and we gave him the album and the poster and everything. Uh, he's he not was gonna, blown yeah, away. He's not going to listen. By no, your no, work. Oh. But the other day, next oh. day, the the whole production team that he he was there, they called us. He wanted to meet us. We went there and said, the album is extraordinary, well and good, well done and produced. Thank you so much. Now I know the Beatles again through Cuban music. Two days after that, and you flavor. <laughs> God, I was called to perform with George Martin with the Symf National Symphonic Orchestra of Cuba in a version of Hey Jude and Yellow Submarine with uh, symphonic arrangements. So I work with George Martin. Sounds incredible. It was, it was like working with John Lennon or Paul McCartney. Oh. So I think that is one of the peak moments of, wow, I was working with a man that produced the best act in the planet. So for me, it was an honor. It was a real honor to work with Sir Martin. <laughs> Wow, incredible. It was good. Um, having done all the things that's on your resume, it's really, mm -hmm. if, if I read them, we'll run out of time. But um, <laughs> what would you like to do? Where do you see yourself in the near future? Well, like what do you uh, really want to accomplish? A recording first. I think I have several albums that I would like to record. I uh, especially. 30 albums are not enough. <laughs> and 70 so songs that you have personally, originally composed, yeah. right? Yeah, I have wow. songs like. But it's not going to be thematic albums like a salsa album, no. Or a jazz album, no. It's going to be like tropical fusion, like mm. everything kind of mixed. Because it's what's going on right now. It's, more you, trendy. Yeah, more. You like you have to give to the people a movement. It's like an artistic production. It's like a theater. You have to be stand up and then go to the middle down again, end up like up again. So I see an album like that. It's an artistic production. You have to give people everything. So uh, that's one thing: recording albums and then producing albums for other singers. And something that is very important now for me is to finally end up the production of Elizabeth first album and another second album that is coming very near from that one the first one is pop rock country music that she's also a songwriter she's very good how did you uh, meet oh my just God. curious it's completely the, the story is like what we were living one street across one from the other and it was so cold in toronto you have to be with a mask and everything but you, you can't see the face of the other person because it's very cold and then you started and, singing to her my God. <laughs> she was working at, uh, uh, in a radio station she uh, was the host of a program and i was i was invited and then we met and suddenly already three of almost four years the interview has never stopped. <laughs> so we have been interviewing each other for, for the past three years. She's a blessing in my life. I could she tell is. that. She's a blessing. She's your number one fan. All the way. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Rojitas, mm -hmm. I hope we have more time because you're such an incredible and interesting personality. Thank you so much.
But I would like to ask, what pieces of advice mm -hmm. or words of wisdom would you suggest to anyone aspiring to become a performer mm -hmm. at your level? First of all, trust yourself, all the way. If you were born artist, you will be an artist no matter what. Even if you're 15 years old or 80 years old, you're an artist. After the talent is not enough, then you have to go to a school and you have to study and you have to prepare yourself. If you're a singer, you have to study the techniques, not only as a singer, no, staging and acting for singers and, you know, just trust yourself and prepare yourself. Uh, fortunately, the people of the world, they're culture, high level cultural people, you know, and we have to work for them. So there's a lot of artists in the world, the competition is strong. If you're starting in this business, you have to be ready, you have to be strong, and you have to study all the way, never stop, every single day of your life. If you're a musician, you have to practice. If you're a singer, you have to study. Master your craft. Yes, all the way. Never stop. Even me, uh, uh, after 30 something years career already, I worn out my voice every day, I, I, I study, I write songs, and I try to find new ways, and it's a never-ending thing, but it's beautiful. Do you have like a special regimen that you do, like a... Well, first of all, after a, after a concert... How do you prepare for For, for example, if you have a concert, be, before the concert, you have to make a silence, like silence for your voice, like six, seven, or eight hours before the concert. Don't speak. Just sleep and be okay and if you're gonna sleep you have to speak like this in a gentle way after the concert you have to sleep at least seven hours and then the next day give to your throat another five or six hours of complete silence and of course little by little start talking again and always with a technique this one you have to put your voice up here less throat less vocal cords more nose then they will rest and she will do the work. Well, I will That's keep it. that in mind. <laughs> yes, so, I need those, mm, those And tips. then the voice go up, and you, have, you use less chords and more nose. And then you start sounding like this, like a little nasal, but it's okay. You're taking care of your voice. I, uh, I've been teaching, you know, I'm also a professor, uh, like a coach for vocal training. So that's also one of the things I've been doing for many years. Mr. He does Thank you so kindly much. <laughs> invite all our global audience and local audience to yeah yes to please. your projects. If you're come looking, up. if you're up there, yes. please come to Vegas. This is beautiful. Or anywhere you are, just follow the good music. I'll be here in Vegas uh, almost maybe for a month. I will play in all over the place. But next Sunday, I will be at Crystal. So just be there. Where else can they find you on social media? Oh, all the way, Rogar Production Music and Arts, the web page, Jorge Luis Rojas Rojitas Facebook, and also the same name for YouTube channel. We have a lot of videos from since I started until now. And uh, all the pages like Facebook as an artist, Rojitas Singer, you know, you know they put Rojitas and everything will come up. The golden voice. The golden voice. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. It's an Pleasure. honor. It has been no, an honor. It is my honor to have you on <laughs> thank Vegas Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thanks. There we have it. Check out Mr. George Rojitas and catch me again next time as I feature another amazing personality here on Vegas Vibe. Asian Network. Call now for huge standalone and bundle savings at
hope you enjoyed this week's episode as much as I did sharing the vibes of Vegas. And time really flies when you're having a grand time. Promise to join me again next week on this same fabulous ACTV channel. And to all our global viewers out there, let me remind you that Las Vegas is not just about the world-renowned strip or the famous Fremont Street experience in the vibrant downtown district. It has real people, a lot of them musicians, live entertainers, and those involved in the world of pageantry. And to the people here in the Valley who work hard each day to make Las Vegas a global brand. I would like to feature you and your cool story right here on Vegas Vibes, either on the ACTV studios or at your workplace. If you believe that is you, please email me now at vegasvibes1 at gmail.com. Before I go, I would like to thank my wardrobe sponsor, Anne Fontaine, located at the Forum Shops of Caesars Palace. Anne Fontaine is now open for business as well. You may call Ms. Anna Billings at 702-733-6205 to make an appointment. And finally, my favorite segment, the Vegas Vibe Closet. Yes, it features an intricate selection of health and beauty products, which I personally use. And for this week's feature, the Max Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation in C3. It is the only powder I have been loyally using for the last two decades. It has everything I want for a powder. Full coverage, natural matte finish, oil-free, long wearing, and it gives me a smooth skin and flawless look. It is something I would definitely recommend to a friend. Check it out, ladies. Below is the link if you wish to learn more about it or purchase it without any delay. Follow Vegas Vibes on Facebook and Instagram or check out VegasVibes.us for updates and announcements. Once again, I'm your host, Esmeralda Padilla-Gold. Thank you for watching. Bye.